First of all, I'd like to thank the organizer. So this work has been done in collaboration with BJ from Isa Pune, Manas from ICTS and Archak from IIT Hyderabad. So this has been recently published in PRB Letters. So first, let me give some uh, brief background of the transport classification. In the last in-house also, I gave this background. So this is the recap of this. So let's say we have a central system that is connected with two bars, let's say at same temperature and different chemical potential. So this is mu and mu minus delta mu. So the particle will obviously flow from higher chemical potential region to lower chemical potential region. So in the non-equilibrium steady state, there will be current and we can see the current scaling with the system size of the central system. Now, if the conductance or current this scales as one by n, this is called the normal diffusive transport. And in that case, the conductivity is actually independent of the dimension of the system. That means it has well-defined conductivity. Now, for low dimensional systems, we often see departure from the scaling of conductance or con and conductivity starts to depend on the dimension of the materials. So now when this conductance is independent of the system size, this is the ballistic transport and in that case conductivity is actually diverging. Conductance can follow exponential decay like this. So this is the perfectly insulating or no transport behavior. And conductance can also follow some uh, uh, power law decay kind of thing like n to the power minus delta. So this is the anomalous transport behaviors. So if this delta is between 0 to 1, so this is the super diffusive transport and here the conductivity is also diverging. So this is a uh, conducting phase. Now if delta is greater than 1, so this is sub diffusive transport and in the thermodynamic limit here the conductivity is actually 0. So yeah. So now the question of this work is that this, if the, the conductance can follow this kind of behavior like it fo follows n to the power, grows as n to the power delta where delta is greater than zero, that means the transport is faster than the ballistic, that means is the super ballistic scaling of conductance is possible or not. So in this work we have shown that it is possible to find such examples but up to some finite size in the thermodynamic limit it is not possible to see this kind of super ballistic scaling of uh, conductance. So the two key ingredients that lead to the super ballistic scaling of conductance, one is the weak incoherent effects from the surrounding environments and another is the non-diagonalizability of uh, inherently non-Hermitian transfer matrix of the underlying lattice. As I go further, I'll uh, tell details about this thing. So that setup we have considered to show the super ballistic scaling of conductance is we have a, uh, this uh, 1D chain that is coupled with two baths, uh, two regular baths, let's left and right reservoirs with chemical potential mu L and mu R and temperature let's say beta. And these two baths take uh, direct, uh, take part in the di direct transport. And with that, there are some additional self-consistent butical probes are attached with each lattice sites. And uh, the chemical potential of these lattice sites are chosen in such a way that on average there will be no current flow through these additional probes. So this probe doesn't take part direct in the direct transport, but it gives some incoherent effects in the transport. And this left and right reservoir, they are responsible for the direct transport. The Hamiltonian for the full setup can be written as the sum of all the Hamiltonians like the chain left right reservoirs and the, all the probes Hamiltonians and the couplings between them. And we have considered here the system as a very simple tide mining nearest neighbor chain where G is the system's hopping strength and we consider G equal to 1 that is the energy scale of the system. And in this setup we can write down the non retarded non-equilibrium Green's function for the system in this way. Here this HC is the single particle Green's function, uh, single particle Hamiltonian corresponding to this uh, central system. And these are all the self energy terms due to the right, uh, left, and the reservoirs and the probes. And we have considered uh, this wideband limit of this uh, baths or probes. So this is the form of the self energy for this case. Now, considering the zero temperature limit in presence of this additional probes also, we can calculate the conductance exactly. And it has two terms. The first term is for the direct transport from the left to right reservoir. And the second term cons consists of all the incoherent processes due to the probes. 
Now this uh, formula has been derived in this paper. And for short range system, for any weak uh, value of this uh, incoherent uh, effects, the transport is, is eventually diffusive uh, due to this incoherent effect. Now, so in, in absence of the probes, if the transport is uh, like uh, uh, localized or uh, no transport or subdiffusive transport, which is slower than the diffusive transport, then in presence of probes, it becomes a diffusive transport. So for these cases, environments actually helps transport. So this is known as environment assisted transport. And now without probes, if the transport is uh, faster than the diffusive transport, like ballistic or super diffusive, now in presence of the probes, the transport eventually becomes diffusive. So this uh, environment uh, uh, here suppresses transport for these cases. Now in this paper, we are interested, interested to look at those conductance behavior in presence of this weak, uh, uh, weak incoherent effect at the band edges of the clean system. Uh, where we have seen this uh, anomalous super ballistic scaling of conductance. Okay, to see first, let's see the in absence of probes, what is this conductance behavior uh, at the band edges. So uh, in absence of probes, it's nothing but a two terminal transport. So this conductance is nothing but the transmission probability. So as we are dealing with fermionic system, and this is nothing but this Green's function one nth element mod square. And we have considered here a short range system. So it's nothing but the, uh, the inversion of a tridiagonal matrix, which can be calculated using the determinant of this tridiagonal matrix. So this conductance is actually proportional to this uh, one by determinant of this trigonal matrix square. And this uh, determinant of this trigon tridiagonal matrix, one can easily calculate using the transfer matrix approach uh, using this equation one. And here for the nearest neighbor model, this transfer matrix has this form. This is an inherently non-Hermitian matrix and with determinant one. And the eigenvalues of the transfer matrix can be uh, calculated using the trace of the transfer matrix in this way. So not only it appears in this conductance formula, this transfer matrix is also connected with the band dispersion relation. So like if you want for this nearest neighbor model, trace of this transfer matrix equal to two cos k, this gives the band dispersion relation. And the extreme at the extremum of, of the band dispersion, transfer matrix, the two eigenvalues of the transfer matrix collises and the, also the corresponding eigenvectors collises. So this is the exceptional point degeneracy of the transfer matrix at the band edges. And this gives the determinant of that uh, tridiagonal matrix is proportional to n. And as, as in turn, it gives conductance as one by n square. So, uh, so we always see a universal subdiffusive scaling of conductance with system size with the scaling exponent two at the band edges where transfer matrix has exceptional point degeneracies. Now we want to see what will happen in presence of probe. So we want to see this conductance scaling sitting at the bandage behavior of system size. Now for very weak values of this uh, incoherent effect, we see first we see a, this uh, one by n square scaling, and then it starts to increase with system size. These we call the super ballistic scaling of conductance. Now with increasing this tau p value, so we can see the window of the super ballistic scaling decreases. Now, if we increase the tau p further, so we can see that we'll uh, see very little the super ballistic scaling and we'll quickly see that eventually diffusive decay of the conductance. So this, uh, so we want to understand this super ballistic scaling now. So this conductance and uh, any GF, uh, all these things uh, can be calculated using the transfer matrix approach in presence of probes also. So this is the this transfer matrix without probes and they because of the incoherent effects. Now there's this additional terms. And in presence of the probes, transfer matrix is always diagonalizable even at the band edges. Now for very weak value of tau p, we have seen up to some system size, still the conductance behavior is governed by the exceptional point degeneracies of the transfer matrix. Now mathematically, for small tau p term, we can do the, we can write down this conductant in terms of this power series of this uh, perturbative power series of tau p. So here the first term is uh, the zeroth order tau p term. 
The second order term is the linear order tau p term, and these are the higher order tau p terms. Now, the first terms this scales as uh, shows universal subdiffusive scaling, like one by n square behavior. Now, the second term in presence of this uh, at the band edges, in presence of this transfer matrix exceptional point degeneracies, it grows with n. So now, for, so for the superbalistic scaling, this is a finite size system thing. So we can uh, see two length scale here. One is the starting of the superbalistic scaling that we call n s p one, and one is the ending of the superbalistic scaling that is n s p two. Now, when this is these two first two terms are comparable, this gives this length scale, this n s p one, that is the starting of the superbalistic scaling of con conductance. And this scales uh, with tau p like this, like tau p to the power minus one third. And when the other higher order tau p square and other terms starts to dominate, that is the length scale corresponding to the ending of the superbalistic scaling of conductance. So that is n s p two. And we check numerically that this uh, scales as tau p to the power minus half. Now the window of the superbalistic scaling, that is this uh, difference between n s p two and n s p one. That grows as one by root of our tau p. That means with decreasing the tau p, the, this incoherent effect, so we can increase the window of the superbalistic scaling. So that regime can be expanded via weakening the tau p. Now, how ro so now uh, we have talked only about the band edges. Now, how robust this superbalistic scaling? So we have seen this. n is b1 that is the unaffected by the weak disorder low temperature and small shifts from the band edges but the up uh, this uh, the ending of the superbalistic uh, scaling uh, length scale that is n is b2 that depends on this uh, weak disorder low temperature and small shift from band edges so yeah and any band edges of the multiband system will show the same effect so yeah that's the summary so we reveal how the non hermitian properties of transfer matrix and the weak incoherent effect that gives rise to this kind of anomalous superbalistic scaling of conductance the practical implications so we have considered here a very simple tight binding model the pra practical implication of our result uh, through like dft will be a thing of great interest to study And also, we have considered here the nearest neighbor hopping model. So, if we consider finite range hopping model, the dimension of the transfer matrix will start to increase. It will show more rich non-Hermitian behaviors. It can even show like higher order exceptional point degeneracies and how this will affect the superbalistic scaling of conductance. So, these we are studying now. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Madhumita. Uh, time for questions. Uh, so, uh, is there some intuitive picture for why the conductance is, you know, like increasing uh, this uh, yeah. superbalistic? I mean, uh, I, I understand. Like, yeah, like, mathematically we have understood. So these are the these processes are giving rise to the superbalistic. But exact physical uh, reason why that? Yeah, we have not understood. So, is there some coherent transport? Is that uh, in the presence of these probes, or somehow? Yeah. yeah. So this n is b two is also is comparable with the phase coherence length actually. Uh, yeah. So in presence of incoherent effects, also some up to some uh, length scale, this coherent transport is happening. So that's why maybe the superbalistic scaling of conductance may be. Okay. Maybe one more question. So. Uh, At this point, your probes are all very uncorrelated, right? You are just putting like separate. Yes. Every side, you have in you know completely different uncorrelated probes. Yeah. If there was some correlation between the probes, some very weak correlation, um, okay. how do you have some intuition on way how the conductance would go? Would it the superbalistic will become better or? I think uh, so. This formula is for this uncorrelated kind of. Conductance, but I don't know. First, we have to check how, even at the formalism level, if there is some correlation between the probes. I think. Uh, I was thinking you could just perturb, but anyway, it's okay. Yeah. So, so you had this uh, at every site. You had this mu one, mu two, mu n, and yes. the same temperature betas, right? Yes. Uh, and you set the mu i's, I guess, by setting the net particle current to be zero. Yes. But do you also 
uh, set the energy current to be zero or there's actually energy flowing into the reservoirs because both there is uh, yeah energy flow that is not zero so the particle current flow is zero okay but there is energy flowing into the reservoirs yes yet. okay oh. that is that is voltage probe like butikar voltage probe kind of setup okay uh, so yeah, yeah. thank you mandavita